Oh, uh, this is a very, very humbling experience. Uh, when Steve Bowman called me a few months ago and said that I was going to be one of the inductees, and I've had a lot of time to reflect on it, uh, in how he did that movie. At first, I would like to thank the Hall of Fame, uh, everybody involved in it, Steve, Barbara Bowman, um, everybody that's been involved in the Hall of Fame. I actually had the opportunity to sit on the board and work very closely with Ray Mursky and a lot of us, in the, I don't know how many years ago that was. But what the Hall of Fame needed was a home. And that was one of the biggest struggles that we had every year, trying to figure out a place to put it. And I would really like to thank Johnny Morse for putting the Hall of Fame here at Bass Pro Shop. This is where it belongs. And every year it's going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Johnny, thank you. And like Dave was saying, uh, I've never had another occupation but competitive gambling. And I still feel like I'm 16 years old. I was like any other typical high school student. Uh, 15 years old, I was a sophomore in high school living in Northern California. And I observed a bass fishing tournament on my home lake, Lake Orville. And a gentleman by the name of D. Thomas won that event. And uh, many of us know who D. Thomas is. I knew then that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a fisherman. Of course, back then it was a weekend gig and first place was 500 bucks. But literally, I can't tell you how dedicated I was to trying to make my dream come true. And the one person that knows that more than anybody is my mom, Barbara Klein. She has the uh, title of being the first mother to ever attend the Bass Masters Classic. In 1979, when I left California with $1,000 in my pocket to come out and try to make a living at fishing, my first GASS event was on the St. John's River. And I figured that, you know, if I could do okay, I might be able to make it to Lake Powell. But at Lake Powell, if I was broke, and I was only 12 hours from the house. My mother supported me. Uh, she always has. She's the one that co-signed the personal loan, especially the industry. We've all evolved together. But when you're 15, 16, 17, and you're fairly, you know, you're having some success, then comes responsibility. So as a young teenager, as a young adult, I was forced in a lot of positions where I had to grow up and learn how to do things on my own. But maintain my passion for fishing. I have a drive for fishing that's even greater today than it was yesterday. Literally, folks, I have probably worked with everybody in this room, everybody at these tables, touched you in some way or another. But one thing that's common, and everybody will agree, is there's probably nobody in the room that has a passion for fishing more than I do. I live it, I breathe it, I think about it day and night, and I love to fish. I actually have a little story to tell about my wife, Jana. Literally, I think we're going on our 30 years of marriage. Jimmy Houston was the one that introduced us in a AFTMA show in Dallas in 85, 86. And as soon as I laid eyes on Jana, I knew that I was going to marry Jana. There was no doubt about it. Uh, Rick Plum can testify to that because I was traveling with Rick a lot and I said, I just met my wife. Um, we have two beautiful daughter, daughters that were actually raised on the BASS circuit, Jana homeschooled. So not only am I kind of like the only angler, or the first angler that's never had an occupation but competitive angler, I've also been one of the first to raise a family truly from fishing. My youngest daughter, Canyon, who's now 21, and my oldest daughter, Lakota, who now is 24. Uh, girls, I really, really love you, and thank you for your, your support. Um, that's the one thing about fishing that that I, you know, I, if I look back on my career, I really don't regret much. But the one thing that I do regret is time away from my family. And of course, it's like any other family that's growing. They travel with us. We homeschool, and then the girls want to go to a public school. So when that happens, I basically missed about 15, 20 years of their life. 
It's hard because I'm very committed to what I do and I'm very engaged and I love this sport dearly. A lot of passion. My sister-in-law, my nephew that flew out from uh, California, thank you for coming. Uh, Alex Klein, my nephew, has competed already in two Bassmaster College Championships. I guess the last one they had in Georgia and in Wisconsin. Um, so we are a fishing family and this is the growth of the sport. What I would like to say is this, um, thank you. I really, really appreciate the friendships that I have in this room uh, and the ones that share the passion with me. But kind of in a close, what I would like to say about me, and anybody that's been around me long enough knows that uh, I'm very passionate about this sport and I want to watch it grow. I have a big vision, and this vision is grand. I know that with my vision comes a tremendous amount of responsibility, and I don't take it lightly. Every day and every night, I think about how to make it better, how can we get it done, and how can we elevate and increase it. Because the biggest thing I want to do, one of my number one goals is to be able to pass this on to the younger generation, high school, college. We have more individuals involved in fishing now than I've ever seen. I walk a lot of the boat shows that I attend, their parents are actually buying a boat because they have a child in high school that just joined the high school bass fishing club. So those are the type of growths that I'd really, really love to see. Folks, thank you. I'm not going to uh, continue on, but thank you very much. Like I said, I'm very humble. Thank you.